Much to Donald Trump's dismay, jury selection in his New York hush money election interference trial is moving faster than many expected, with a judge overseeing the trial claiming that at this rate, opening statements could start as soon as Monday. And while Trump once again made this claim. I know more about courts than any human being on Earth. OK? Yeah, today he showed his ignorance, at least with the jury selection process, falsely believing he was supposed to be granted unlimited strikes against prospective jurors, which, if true, would theoretically mean he could forever delay the start of a trial by striking every potential juror. What Trump does know more about than any other human being is how to freak out, whine, and rage against the judicial system, the judge, and, of course, the prosecutor, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg, who he says should be more focused on crime in the city. It's Alvin Bragg's fault. Alvin Bragg does nothing. He goes after guys like Trump, who did nothing wrong. Violent criminals, murderers, they know there are, there are hundreds of murderers all over the city. They know who they are. They don't pick them up. They go after Trump. Okay, let's forget for the moment that major crime in the fact that major crime in New York City uh, has actually gone down this year. The incessant attacks on Bragg from Trump and those on the right have also been a way for them to expand their reach to attack other progressive prosecutors. He's one of maybe a dozen or more across the country that get elected on an ideological agenda, usually with funding from people like George Soros. They've weaponized the, the, you know, the DA's office there as they have other Soros-funded DA's offices around the country. Joining me now is Joyce Vance, former U.S. attorney, professor at the University of Alabama Law School and MSNBC legal analyst, and Rashad Robinson, president of Color of Change, who has backed progressive prosecutors, including Alvin Bragg. Thank you both for being here. I do want to go to you first, Rashad, because the day that Donald Trump's uh, jury selection began in his, in his trial, in his election interference trial, he floated this memo that named... George Soros, they're all Soros-funded, Soros-funded prosecutors, and named Color of Change in attacking Alvin Bragg. This has become a thing. Talk a little bit about this trend in attacking people by calling them Soros-funded and also naming Color of Change. Well, it's no surprise that the rich and powerful who now sometimes, every once in a while, are held accountable are going to then go attack the very people who are doing the work to hold them accountable. You know, we have worked uh, for years to um, make the criminal justice system more fair, to be able to level the field and to be able to bring safety and justice to all people, to all communities. And as part of that effort, we've gone out and we've raised money in that effort to engage in ele elections. But, Joy, I want to demystify what we've used that money for. We've used that money to be able to expand the number of people who vote in these elections. District attorney elections are famously low turnout elections. Yes. In fact, we've been in a place where 90 percent of district attorneys have run unopposed. So we've worked to expand the number of people, particularly at Color of Change, the number of black people who vote in these elections, making our democracy actually work better for all people. And in that process, we've um, brought people together around uh, um, brunches and other events where we've had them contact voters. We've went out and knocked on doors. We've raised money to send mail and to communicate digitally, all in an effort to give people a deep understanding about what's at stake for these offices. In the process, electing district attorneys who will help uh, the little guy, who will stand up for the little guy who will help to make our systems more fair and to also hold those in power accountable, just like they hold everyone else accountable. And we're not quite there yet. Um, we still have a long way to go. And we also hold the people we put in office accountable. But Donald Trump, just like everything he does, wants to distract us from all of the ways in which he has used the system, used the levers of power, used the levers of government uh, for his own benefit. And so none of us should be distracted. And all of us should be, I think, invested in making sure any and every election um, has as many people turning out as possible. Right. I mean, Joyce, this is the thing is that the, you know, the job of district attorney, the job of attorney general, these are elected offices. And so the, the justice that's meted out in these communities to set aside the Donald Trumps who can delay and delay their trials for ordinary people. It really matters who the D.A. is, whether or not you're a black or brown person or a person of color, or another person of color or a, a, a poor person, whether you can get justice. And I just want to list some of the, D, the D.A.s who've been attacked. Kim Fox, she's not seeking a third term. She's been the subject of these kinds of attacks in San Francisco. 
Francisco, Chesa Budin, who has made crime and homelessness an issue and trying to mitigate, you know, using the, the criminal justice system to deal with the homelessness problem. You've had in the Tampa Bay Times, you've got this story about DeSantis removing, he removed two different um, state attorneys, Andrew Warren, who refused to prosecute people based on uh, uh, um, the, the, the bans on abortion, and Monique Worrell, um, essentially, who also was trying to make the criminal justice system more fair to poor people and people of color. I, I mean, I, I, there is a trend, I would say, um, Joyce. I would, I would include Marilyn Mosby in Maryland, who, you know, got, people got very angry that she prosecuted police in the Freddie Gray case mm -hmm. and tried to mitigate the sentences of hundreds of people based on, uh, impro you know, improper actions by police. They are attacked based on that. Talk a little bit about this. Yes, so we hear the explicit appeals to racism and anti-Semitism in these attacks, but there's more to it than just that. As you're pointing out, district attorneys, state and county DAs are elected by the people and they're responsible to the people when they set their priorities for prosecution. And beyond that, many of these reformer DAs, these and others, represent a shift in criminal justice that says these old policies, these tough on crime policies have failed again and again. They've led to mass incarceration. They've stripped black communities of an entire generation of young men and young leaders. And they haven't reduced crime. Instead, we have overcrowded prisons. We incarcerate more people than most countries, and we incarcerate them for longer periods of time. So these new prosecutors were elected on smart on crime theories, thinking that we could do more, for instance, with pre-prosecution programs, with community-based programs that were data-based and shown to reduce crime. We see that to some extent in New York City, where crime, as you pointed out, is down. We see that in other communities. But again, the politics of prosecution is interfering with what's best for our communities when someone like Donald Trump appeals to these old, tired sorts of ideas as opposed to letting prosecutors do the job their communities are electing them to do. Yeah, amen. And I will note that the one person that has not been attacked by him is Aileen Cannon, who's been very favorable to him. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.